Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And today I'm reviewing Dice Hospital Emergency Roll from Alley Cat Games. Emergency Roll is the roll and write version of Dice Hospital, designed by Stan Kodonsky. To be clear, Dice Hospital is designed by Stan Kodonsky. This is designed by Matthew Dunstan and Brett Gilbert, and this is the roll and write version, which I've now come full circle on. In this game, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be drawing a card every single round and assigning dice every single round, ultimately with the goal of filling your hospital of as efficiently as possible. All players are going to be playing with the same information to a degree. Let's let's just go ahead and act out a round or two, and you'll get a feel for how this game plays. You're going to start by going ahead and flipping over one of these cards, and you're going to go ahead ahead and roll these dice, assigning the specific values. By the way, this is literally the worst roll you could possibly have for the start of the game, but let's go ahead and show you how this plays out. You see, early game, you kind of want low numbers. We'll, we'll talk about that. From there, what you're going to do is the, the captain, the chief physician, so to speak, is going to go ahead and draw one of these dice. In this case, what I'll do is I'll go ahead, let's pretend on that person. I'm going to grab this die over here, and I'm going to draw a six somewhere in one of these wards. You see, on your pad of paper over here, you have specific wards broken up by these thicker lines. Each one giving a pattern that has to be filled matching the specific color, but then also putting a specific number in ascending order. So for example, having all sixes in your first round is not the best way to start the game with, with caveats. So I'm going to go ahead and take that six. I'm going to go ahead and put it into one of my wards over here. And I think I'll put it into this one, which is six long because I'm going to drop that over here, which means right now I can no longer put anything else into this ward because it has to go in ascending order. The good news is along with each die also comes with an ability. So I'll go ahead and grab that and I'm going to circle I'm going to isolate that six. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and isolate that six, and now I can start the pattern again. Whenever you see that circle over there, you get to circle the most recent number in any ward, and you start the pattern again. You can apply it to the number you just took, but you can also apply it to any other number in any other ward. Now, the other players can all choose one of the other dice. And when I say all choose, I mean it doesn't matter if you're playing this game with one player or six players or whatever you're playing with, you're going to go ahead and have the other players choose any of the dice. So the chief physician removes one die from play, but all the other players can choose either the yellow or the green, and they could choose the same thing. In this case, the green is going to allow us to put down put down a nurse into one of the categories, and the yellow is going to give us two stethoscopes, which will allow us to modify our dice. So every stethoscope you spend, you start with one, and you can cross them off. Every stethoscope you spend allows you to move the dice one pip higher or lower. Sixes do not cross to ones, ones do not cross to sixes. In this case, I'll get an early start in the nurse game. Let's pretend somebody else was getting an early start in the nurse game, and they'll do their thing, and we'll do have them do their own board, so we're going to ignore that. We're going to draw another card, and now I am not the chief physician. Chief physician is going to pass to another player. We're going to pass that around, and then we're going to again, roll the dice, having them become significantly better rolls. And someone else is going to pick, they're going to pick that two over here, because that two is a solid number to pick. And what they're going to do is they're going to grab that two and they're going to, I don't know, match the, we'll, we'll, we'll talk more about them. Let's ignore their turn. I just know that that's a good choice for them. I could take the three, but that doesn't really help me as much. The five is a little bit risky. The problem is I do want that blood bag. So I think I'm going to take the risky move and again, take a five, popping it over here next to that little uh, radiation thing over there and grab a blood bag, circling a blood bag. We'll explain what they do in a second. We'll come back to my turn. Let's pretend it's a two player game. So I'll alternate being the cheap position. I get to choose again and let's go ahead and go through. We'll do a few more turns and you'll just see how this plays out and it'll all make a lot of sense as we go. So now I have first access. I could take that one yellow, which is certainly not bad because that one yellow can help me get an early start on a, on a grid over here. The downside is that two, the two over here would let me circle off that five starting again. I think I'm gonna go ahead for the sake of showing you new things. I'm gonna grab that one yellow. I'm gonna start that one yellow over, none of these are the ideal option. I'll start it over here. I'm gonna start that one yellow over here. It's gonna go down that pathway. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that over there. I'm gonna cross out this nurse and circle this over here. So now I'm gonna be scoring two points at the end of the game. Each of these nurses in each, in each ward can be not marked off once, but potentially giving you 35 points by the end of the game if you do them all. We'll again go to the next player. The next player will take their turn. We'll roll the dice. We'll choose an option for them. So over here, here, and here. They're gonna go ahead and choose that four. That's a pretty decent, you know what? I wanna show you what the four does so they won't choose the four. They're gonna choose that three and then mark something off or whatever. And I'll choose the four over there, which I'll get to put down somewhere. And I'll go ahead and put this four down in a gray ward, a gray ward can accept any number, and that is a critical patient. A critical patient is going to be worth the points shown in it. In other words, those little exclamation marks, not so great on ones, twos, and whatever, but once you get to four, fives, and sixes, those can be chunks of points, but you obviously have to be mindful of the fact that you still need to finish the ward. We'll go back to my turn again, rolling the dice, rolling the thing, showing you the stethoscopes this time. Ooh, a one, one, two, that's not bad, so let's go ahead and show that down over there. We'll grab that one, we'll grab the one with the stethoscope, and you know what, you know what, we're going to grab this one over here, because then if I take that one, I can put this one over in this word, starting off that word. I can also circle that, which means I'm going to circle this five, which means I can start again from this pattern here, which is important because that's going to be necessary. 
Roll again, roll again, and see what we got. It's gonna be the other player's turn. And let's show you this one. I'm gonna show you how that works in a second. Let's have them choose, wait, wrong pattern here, wrong pattern. Let's have them choose the, the uh, six with the circle off, and then I'll choose this one over here. So when you choose the one over here, you also get a die of that color and either a five and a six, although the numbers can vary, but this is a five or a six of red, which means I have to put a five or a six of red somewhere. To that end, if I look at my grid, there's no great spots to put it, but I can work with that. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put this one down over here in this spot over here. And you can do this in either order. Then I'm gonna take that five, which is a red five, but I'm gonna make it into a not red five by giving up a blood bag. A blood bag allows you to change the color of a die or to take the die that the chief physician took. But I'm changing the color of that red five into a green five and putting it over here in this box, allowing me to go forward there. And then past that, you can also use your little uh, stethoscopes to mark the dice up one or, or up, up or down one. And that should cover all the things you can get. Let's make sure we're not missing anything over here. We cover the dice, we cover the blood bags, we cover the exclamation marks, we cover the circles and the quarantines. I think we've covered all the things you can get as you go through this game. The last thing is as you go through over here, you can, if, whenever you cannot place a die in any way, you put it into the morgue and you lose a point at the end of the game, which means it's a good time to tell you how the game scores. Again, game sequence is pretty simple. You're going to roll the dice, you're going to flip over a card, the game goes until the card deck runs out. At the beginning of the game, you do remove some cards randomly from the game, but all players will be selecting dice, grabbing them, putting them into their wards, and that's uh, rinse and repeat until eventually you get to the end game and score, alternating whether you're choosing the dice first as the, as the chief physician or taking the other dice as the other players. As far as scoring, let's go ahead and go through this. Scoring, you're going to start by looking at your completed wards. Every completed ward is going to score the points shown on it, which could be a giant chunk of points, especially if you get them all. You're going to score points for your critical patients. Those are all the exclamation ones. So for example, right now we have a four over there, so I'll put that down over here. You score points for the, the, the largest nurse number you have, which means every nurse, every ward that got a nurse is going to increase your points, possibly getting you all the way up to 35 points over there. You're going to score points for your two cardiologist cards. These are going to be scoring cards where you can get either eight if you're the first or five if you're not the first points for doing different things. In this case, the first person to fill two wards, and in this case, the first person to completely surround one of these uh, radiology centers. Then you're going to go from there. Let's pretend we got, you know, zero and five points respectively. From there, you're going to score score points for your radiologist. That's going to be this card over here, this card in particular, and there's different cards you can choose from. But this one over here is going to score you 10 points for each radiology center that has either a value of 12 or lower or a value of 30 or higher, effectively meaning you have to be planning ahead to stack numbers on that center. You want to stack the right numbers, either high or low, and it does take work and resetting to do so, but you're rewarded with 10 points for doing that. And then we have the epidemi epidemiologist card over here, which this particular one is three points per number in your largest group of connected numbers disregarding walls. So for example, had we started this center again over here with that one and we had put a one over here, then we'd look at this section of four ones and say, hey, here's four ones that are touching through walls, but it doesn't matter. That's going to be four times three or 12 points and you'll score the points for that. Finally, you lose any points for anyone in your morgue and you go ahead, negative one points over there, and you go ahead and sum up the total and that is how you play Dice Hospital ER Emergency Roll. Flip cards, assign numbers, roll dice, rinse and repeat until eventually you get to the end of the game and someone wins. So let's talk about the game. Ease of play. Very easy to teach. Very, very easy game to teach. Uh, the biggest thing I think that is often annoying is when you're first looking at this grid the first time, it is very hard to actually see the lines. I find I have to really show people. I mean, they're there. They are thick lines, don't get me wrong. But you kind of just see a hexagonal grid pattern and you don't see, I think partially because of the way the lines fold around each other, they don't look like straight lines because they're not straight lines. But that does result in me always having to be like, here's a section, here's a ward, these are what these look like. But that is overall... I think the biggest thing that people get hung up on, the rest of the game is incredibly simple. You have to go through five or six different actions. The sequence is flip a card, roll a dice, make a choice, rinse and repeat until you get to the end of the game. And the game plays in 30 minutes or less generally. As far as player count, this is a one to six player game. I've played this at a few player counts. I've played this at a two, three, a five, I think. But uh, yeah, I've not played it at all player counts, but this is a, a one to six player game, very easy to dive into. Uh, but that's going to be player count. As far And the solo mode I have not looked at or read into. As far as what I like, don't like, and can see others not liking. First of all, this is a quick playing, quick teaching, accessible game that is rewarding as you fill out your words. It hits all the basic tenements of what you want in a roll and write game. It is 
easy to play, it is compelling, it is fun, it is simple, it gives you powers and abilities that give you an interesting choice of which die do I want? Do I want that extra blood bag that'll buy me flexibility? Do I want to reset that ward to be able to get the more to get another patient locked in next turn? Do I want to start going for those critical patients? Getting a six critical can be incredibly cool, but the place that I'm gonna put it is gonna clog me up. Is it worth that six points? Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Do I want to try to fill out all the nurses? There's a bunch of choices you're making in this game. It gives you all those satisfying combinations. It is not a cascading benefit type game. It's a simple make a choice, choose a thing, score away, do what you can in this game. It's very satisfying to achieve high scores in any different thing. To be able to get that radiologist thing, get 20 points around each of your radiology centers can be a lot of points in a game that generally goes to like 80 to 90 points. Getting 20 points of that can be worth the effort. Then again, getting a whole bunch of points for the epidemiologist, I think I one game I got like 15 points for this card, which again is very satisfying to do so. Having the different goals, and we have a stack of different goals you can play with over here, gives you different little small little challenges to pursue over here, and the game gives you enough restrictions. That whole one to six thing where you have to go in ascending order, not ascending like one to six, but just higher than the last number, that gives you a thing to challenge around, but the game gives you enough ways between blood bags, between stethoscopes, and between quarantining patients, the game gives you the tools you need to work around the restrictions that it gave you. All those things are satisfying and hit all the check marks of what I want in a role in my game. What I don't like is the thing that generally makes role in my games last less longer in my collection, which is the lack of variety. Variety in this game is going to come purely from the goals. The goals you have over here, there's no map variety, there's no major shift or anything else to the game. The game plays out the same every single time, and if this game does not stay in my collection, it's going to be because at a certain point, I feel like I've played it enough times and I'm ready to move on from it. This is a game that strongly could have benefited from something that would really mix up the game state. Uh, and Royal Knights generally do have this problem, to be fair. To be fair to Royal Knights as a general category, they often do have this problem that there's something, there's always a question of why, what's going to make me keep playing this game again? What's going to make me continue to pull it out? This is is light, this is accessible, this is easy to play, but the variety comes purely from the goals and nothing else. As far as what I can see others not liking, first of all, the luck of the dice is very much present, and the fact that, it's not just luck of the dice, it's that luck of the dice combined with the fact that the chief physician gets first pick. There will be many rounds in which you have multiple picks that are all good for you. There will also be many rounds in which there's one good pick for you. If the rounds in which there's only one good pick are the rounds in which you're not the chief physician, and the rounds in which there are multiple good picks are the rounds in which you are the chief physician, that's going to be a little irritating. I think the chief, the chief physician concept is an interesting concept, but I think it adds an unnecessary degree of unfairness to the game. Unfairness that is mitigated by the blood bags, to be fair, but you still have to pursue those blood bags. So I, I think that that was an interesting rule that makes it stand out in a way from some of its peers, but I don't think it necessarily adds to the experience. If anything, I think the chief physician rule takes away from the experience. And then secondly, the early game can be a bit screwy. Uh, as you're playing through the game over here, early game you need all low numbers, which means you kind of are a victim to whatever happens. That whole luck aspect is further doubled down, further doubled down on by the chief physician. That early game you just need that, you need low numbers. As you progress through the game, you can specifically build out your board, and you should specifically build out your board, in which high or low numbers can both be good for you, but early game you don't have that agency so whatever you roll early game is what you roll as far as final thoughts on dice hospital emergency er emergency roll I like, Dice I like Dice Hospital. It is a fun, simple, compelling game, and it does a lot of what I like in Roll Rights. It's designed by uh, Brett Dunstan, who has been Matthew Dunstan, who, Brett Gilbert and Matthew Dunstan, who have been doing a lot of Roll Rights games in general, and it clearly shows they are they are very good at what they do, and they've delivered another good game here. The key word for me is good. It is a good, fun, simple, compelling experience that I certainly have enjoyed and will keep playing for now. For now is the key word. I think this is one that does not last in my collection. I think this is one that I continue to hold on to for right now, and then one day when I'm looking at my games, I realize that I've been picking other games off the shelf instead of this, and I start being ready to move on from it. Uh, overall, it's a 3.5 out of 5 for me. I recommend it, but understand that it's it's a roll and write with a limited degree of variety to the experience. Speaking of other games that I pick over it, or other game recommendations, uh, first of all, I'm going to recommend Welcome To. This game most feels similar to Welcome To in my collection. I think Welcome To is a little bit better over overall in some of the ways it implements the game, but it has a lot of the core DNA, and I think if you like one, you'll like the other, and vice versa. And secondly, and this is not necessarily a game that feels the same, but Isle of Cats Explore and Draw. If we're talking about big box games that have been extrapolated down to roll and rights, like Dice Hospital to Dice Hospital Emergency Roll, we have Isle of Cats Explore and Draw coming down from Isle of Cats that, for me, was actually an improvement on the Isle of Cats experience. I really enjoyed Isle of Cats Explore and Draw. It gave me all the same feelings of what I'm looking for, and again, same degree. You have a choice, you have a puzzle, people are choosing different ways, very different implementation, a lot more variety to the experience as well, but I think that is a nice solid level up if you're looking for something a bit deeper that also is connected to a bigger box game. Until next time, I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope you found it helpful in some way, and as always, I hope you have a good one.